TWM Podcast. Day 7 in isolation and George is slowly going crazy. Yeah, I really am going crazy, but not crazy enough as we are still able to bring you this weekly episode of the Wednesday Night Wars podcast. It's war, it's still happening, and very good show. I really enjoyed both these shows. Alongside me, as always, it's Brad Cassidy. It's the man with the news. How you doing, Brad? Hello, yeah. I think I might be the only person currently isolated because of work, but there we are. Yeah, for some reason, Brad's work thinks working is more important than health. Do you work for weather spoons? <laughs> I don't work for weather spoons. Oh, I've seen that on, on social media a lot and it's really annoyed me. But anyway, anyway, we won't talk about weather spoons. We'll talk about some wrestling. Before we get into talking about wrestling, we've got to talk about corporate stuff. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, Acast, Popping, and YouTube. Us here at TWM Podcast are brought to you by We Love Sport, a brilliant app and a brilliant company generally. Uh, who are able to find you your nearest and dearest uh, sporting bars that show local uh, local latest WWE pay-per-views. Unfortunately, WrestleMania will not be shown because of this horrific virus. Uh, go on to the App Store, download their app, because they've got 400 bars under their remit that will be showing shows that you can go have a look at. That's the We Love Sport app on both Google Play and Apple um, Store. Follow them on all social medias at We Love Sport UK and check out their website at We Love Sport.co. Additionally, we are also brought to you by WrestleCrate, who are still going very strong. It's one thing in wrestling. That's one thing that hasn't died because of coronavirus is wrestling. We are still here. We're like cockroaches. And WrestleCrate is joining in on that as they're still dishing out their wonderful merchandise boxes. Use the code TWM Wrestling for a free autographed item in your first box. If you continue subscription for two additional months, you get two additional autographed items. I think. Next month is Becky Lynch, and I don't know what the following one is, but like to get an autograph item off Becky Lynch, that's class. Like that, that's awesome. Go over to their website, wrestlecrate.co.uk, use the code TWM Wrestling to uh, to get yourself some autograph items. And let's jump into NXT. A quick tidbit to know about NXT is we didn't get the usual commentary team of uh, Mara Ronaldo, Nigel McGuinness, and Beth Phoenix. I assume uh, Beth Phoenix is stuck in Canada. Don't they live in Canada? I think they live in Canada. Uh, no idea where they live. Canada, Canada and America's borders are messed up. Nigel's probably stuck in the UK, and uh, Mauro is probably just told to, to chill out and have some time. So we got Byron Saxton and Tom Phillips on commentary last night, uh, which was refreshing um, to hear Byron Saxton in a. I hate Byron Saxton. I hate Byron he Saxton, annoyed. but for some reason he wasn't like that on the next on the He was good on the next day. I, I don't yeah. know what. what he doesn't have Vince McMahon in his ear. Come on, like we they, people say this about about Michael Cole. He was so good because he doesn't have Vince in his ear. It's Vince, Vince is the problem. A lot he will always be the problem. He will always be the problem. And last night we got a very very intense discussion. It was, it was, there was no physicality. To it. It's just a discussion between Triple H, Tommaso Ciampa, and Johnny Gargano. Triple H was in the ring. He demanded that they came out to the ring because he was pissed at the pair of them for destroying the performance center um, and trying to kill each other. Both men come out and he basically mediates a conversation between the two of them to make sure shit doesn't hit the fan, basically. Um, he says that he wanted their match to be on the grandest stage of them all. Gargano said, nah, we don't need it. But it could have been on the grandest, uh, grandest, grandest stage last year, but he went and broke his neck. He's talking about Champa and his neck injury last April. And um, basically, we come to the conclusion that it's one more match and that is it. You get in one more match and it's done. You're not allowed, like, if you... The company, they, they, they think the company's not big enough for the both of them. Yes, it is. It's big enough for the both of you. You're going to have that to both deal with being in there. That last match is going to get screwed, though. Because of that, uh, well, Killer Cross is just going to get, yeah. get, get involved right at the end. That's because I'm um, spoiled a little bit there, but it, that match yeah. is going to not end the way anyone wants it to. Yeah, probably, but hey-ho. Um, Triple H says he's going to find an empty warehouse, put a ring in it, put a referee in there, and that's it. So we're more or less just going to get... I know like every wrestling at the minute is empty arena, but it's just literally fully empty warehouse. It's just a ring, a referee, and the two of them. And what better two men to have in this sort of situation than Gargano and Ciampa? They'd be so inventive with what they're going to be doing in there. Mm, definitely, especially if they, they have full access to the full building. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, it's not announced where it's going to be, but I think it's going to. If you're about WrestleMania, oh, John Cena and Bray Wyatt are going to do that. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, they're apparently like they're doing like a Hollywood treat to it. 
Yeah, I think that's. I think they're just going to use the same set for the NXT. I really want. I like. Apparently, obviously, the, there's the rumours that they're pre-recording WrestleMania this week because I think yeah, the not, mayor. Of, it's not rumours. It's confirmed that it was. Oh, it confirmed is confirmed. Thing. Because First mayor of the the mayor of Florida. No, it's not Florida. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where Florida, Florida Center is, isn't it, Florida? Yeah. And they said that they've put like a lockdown basically and like I think even though film crews count as essential staff, I think they're gonna be stopping them like pre recording that sort of stuff. So um I would love to like them film like an NXT and then just in the middle of it, just like seeing them and Bray Wyatt just sort of stumble through through it. <laughs> Just having a brawl through the performance center, or just midway through, like a, a Zaya Lee and a Lee match. I think they're doing that differently. If, if if you're going to speculate on that, though, I think they're just doing the WrestleMania matches there. The gimmick matches they're doing at other locations. So I don't know if they're going to be this week or not. Fair enough. Um, yeah, more or less, we get an empty arena match. Gargano says, um, and then Triple H asks, when when do they want it? Gargano says, you know, he threw me off a off a scaffolding thing last week, put me for a table two weeks ago. When like when. I'm not fighting him now. Um, and he basically says two weeks time. And um, so in two weeks, we're going to get Gargano versus Champa. Obviously, WrestleMania has been in gone at that point. And then, like Brad alluded to, the Tron comes on with a video of creep stuff and a clock and that sort of thing. And it just ends with Kid across his face. But it's like, he's just, he's just his eyes and the bridge of his nose. That's all you can see. And um, so he's obviously coming for one of them. And I really hope he's coming for Triple H. I hope he doesn't screw that match at the end, though, because that'll just be... For yeah. a blow-up match, do I have to have an interference and they can't wrestle each other again? It won't be. Yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be annoying. But um, I really hope he's coming for Triple H. Oh, that'd be, that'd be brilliant. Triple H versus Killer Cross. That'd be something. Like, get in my veins. Get in my veins. Um, speaking of big men, because they are big men, we had a, a bit of a showdown between the other big men on NXT last night. Uh, Keith Lee is in the ring saying he owes Dominic, Dominic Dijakovic an apology. He obviously thought Dom, Dom attacked him last week when it was actually Damian Priest and hit him with a spirit bomb. And Dom comes out, he says, don't care. All he wants is a title because you took, like, I don't know why. He says, like, you took the chances away from me and took food off my family's table. I think that's a bit of a weird thing to come out with. Um, but, yeah, um, he, he says that. Priest obviously comes out as well. There's, like, a triple threat being set up. Um, he says, you know, he's taking a claim to a North American title because he, he doesn't want it because he doesn't, he doesn't want it because it's a title. He wants it because it's going to bring him more fame, more money, more women, and more uh, legacy. Priest basically then gives up with talking, whips out the nightstick, um, as, and he goes for the ring. Don pushes Lee out of the way to get to Priest, um, and then big bit of a ball comes out to the outside of the ring, uh, and then Dominic Dijakovic hits a big moonsault dive off the second rope into the pair of them, and he stands tall. Um, but what he doesn't do, he doesn't pick up the title, which is good, because if you pick up the title, that's a silly thing. That's what you never do. But I'm pretty excited for this, uh, for this triple threat match. Like three just big guys battering each other. Well, we haven't got long to wait. It's on next week's show, so it should be. Yeah, a, I know. Should, should be should be a great match. Um, here, uh, I I actually think uh, Keith Lee will retain, but I'm not too sure. Who who do you think will win this one? I think Lee will retain. Like they've got such a gem in Keith Lee, they'd be stupid to give up the title now. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I... He's he's such a gem that I, yeah, but it'd be a good match either way. It's just going to be. I think, I think if it was normal times, if it was before the apocalypse. Um, I think he would, he would have got, uh, been great for the Raw after WrestleMania, but oh or yeah, winning, that part or winning the or winning the armbar or something like that. But it's just you know, I mean, it's 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 a different time now, so he'll be in NXT for for a little while. Now. Yeah, exactly. And um, we also got last night Matt Riddle defeating uh, Roy Strong. And um, what I love is at the end of the match, Matt Riddle sort of bopping along to his theme song, looking into an empty crowd. Like, I don't know why, but he's attacked by two big guys, big Samoan, not Samoan, they, they sounded like Ukrainian or Russian, um, and they just mm. battered him, um, and they've aligned really with, are. no, I don't actually know who they are. All right, okay, so it's called Singh and Gurjar. Uh, Gurjar has a background in acting and kickboxing, and he's, he's, he hasn't really done much as of yet. However, Singh won India's Million Dollar Arm Reality Series, um, and it's actually a Disney movie um, called Million Dollar Arm. I don't know if it's on that Disney Plus or not, but if you want to learn a bit more about Singh from that tag team, he was the star, well, that's what that movie is based around him. Oh, fair enough. Um I, basically, the new version of the uh, AIP, then. Yeah, yeah basically. Million dollar, million dollar Arm is on Disney+, Plus. so just have a look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Singh from that tag team, he's the main guy in it. So. Oh, 
Fair enough. Well, that's that's pretty cool. And um, they are escorted, well, not escorted, uh, accompanied by the to the ring a little bit later on by Malcolm Bivens, formerly on known on the independent circuit Stokey Hathaway, and it's actually his first appearance for NXT. I'm pretty sure on TV. Yeah, he signed, uh, he signed like a year ago. I didn't even know he was with him because I remember from he was being Ring of Honor didn't he, years ago, but I don't yeah. remember. I didn't know he was with NXT, so it was just like, oh, he's that. But yeah, um, he's. he's He's a great mouthpiece, to be fair. Yeah, no, he is. Uh, he was, with, yeah, evolving ring, ring of honor. He joined WWE in March 2019, and he's just made his appearance on TV. He was, he was with um, manager Babatunde and uh, John Rock, or Jer- Jer- uh, Jermaine Halley, as he's known in, uh, in NXT. Um, but yeah, like, he hasn't really been on an, an NXT TV at all. Um, I did when I first saw his name because obviously I watched the YouTube highlights. I saw Malcolm Bivens, and I was like, hold on. Was is that what's his face? Um, mm-hmm. The one that like called WWE racist and left, but I was like, no, 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 no it's not him. <laughs> well, ACH. ACH, yeah. yeah. I was like, ACH. Was, was, was his name Malcolm? Was that it? Um, but it wasn't. No, it, it was. Uh, I, God, I don't know. It's, I don't know his name. I'll have to look it up now. But yeah, no, it's uh, not him. I'll say that much. Yeah, I, I saw that. And I was like, ah. oh, no, Jordan Miles. That was what he was called. Jordan Miles. That's it. Uh, last night as well, we got Tyler Breeze defeating Austin Theory because Austin Theory got cocky and he picked up um, Breeze's phone, started talking to it, and yeah, he just got hit with a beauty shot and and lost. Which I think is a great way to go. It is Theory is Theory's character is he's cocky and he's young. Him losing because of him being cocky is great. It wasn't. To be fair though, I am going to pull you up on that. It wasn't Breeze's phone. It was actually his phone. And the best part oh, no. of that. Was- was yeah when Breeze actually won the match, he started recording himself on um, Austin Theory's phone, mouth and off at his phone. So it it, it nice. kind of it adds a bit of a adds a bit of a intrigue into it. Um, hopefully that video will be put onto the social soon. Um, yeah. And if it is, it'll be quite fun to watch. Yeah, no, it'd be pretty good. It was, um, well, I think what made me laugh the most is when Breeze like uh, hits him or attacks him some kind, sits on the top rope like he always does, and says, "Come on, little boy." Yeah, well, it's the old uh, man versus the little boy. That's that's what they so even though Breeze is like younger than most Breeze, like thirty, mid mid thirties. He's also yeah, exactly. what I I think for me, he's one of the most criminally under, underrated wrestlers the WWE's ever had. Yeah, I mean the best match he's ever had was against Jushin from the Liger. So, um, yeah, what uh, are, since what then, are. yeah, since then, since then, I, I don't think he's done much of no. He's done like the fashion files and that, but he needs. Like, oh yeah, the fashion files were incredible. No, no I, I, I get it. I get it. I, I get they were going to get it, but he needs like a title run, um, and he, yeah. would, he would definitely pull it off. Oh yeah, I think it'd be really good in a title picture of some kind. Um, Cameron Grimes last night defeated Tony Nee in um, a pretty good contest between the two of them. Um, Cameron Grimes won with the cave in. Uh, we got a pre tape promo from Adam Cole, and um, just talking about him being the longest reigning NXT champion, which is as of now, I think nearly. But it's probably 300 days by now, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Killian then defeated Tahuti Miles, which is one of the best names I've ever heard. Um, but he I, didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know who he was, to be fair. I think, he, I think he's a jobber, but he got battered. Uh, um, we were scheduled to have Zaya Lee versus Aaliyah in a qualifying match for the women's uh, number one contender ladder match. Go backstage, Zaya Lee is injured. She's attacked backstage. What made me laugh was she's holding her knee, and the, the referee goes, is it your knee? No, it's my elbow. As the refs in WWE, though, that they're trained to ask stupid questions. That is, but, that is, that is a fair point. Um, but there was no authority figure to drop the bombshell. It was Greg Hamilton who went, well, there's someone else that's going to face you now, Aaliyah. And it was the returning Io Shirai. And I feel so bad for Io Shirai to return to an empty arena because she would have got what a pop she would have got. No, it was, no, I mean, I mean it's, it's quite sad that she's gone to an empty arena, but at least... Um, she's now in that ladder match, isn't she? And I don't know. She might. I, 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 out of everyone that's in it, I can see her uh, the most likely uh, one to win. To win. Match. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Um, she returned with with lovely, partially pink hair. Um, and yeah, she did win. She defeated it, um, Aaliyah with the Moon Soul. Uh, the other match we got for the um, qualification was Candice Laurie defeating Caden Carter. So we are um, five out of six. Um, which will lead on to the news, which we're doing a little bit regarding next week, um, sure. about another match. But yeah, Caden Carter is not in it. Candice LeRae is. And they also interviewed Candice LeRae about her husband, Gargano's actions, and she just didn't say anything. 
um, which is which is hilarious. And then the final match we got was uh, Britain Brawlers, Only Larkin and uh, Danny Birch defeating Shane Thorne and Brendan Vink. Uh, so Shane Thorne's got himself another tag team partner. Um, yeah, they were also on Raw. They lost to the Street Profits. Um, yep. So they're trying to put them on TV more, but if I, I, I get that they want to use them more, but give them a win if, if they're going to use them more. TWM podcasts are brought to you by We Love Sport, the fantastic app finding you your nearest sports bar showing the latest WWE pay-per-views. We Love Sport has over 400 of the best sports bars and pubs in the UK at your fingertips and allows you to book front row seats, giving you the best views of the action. You can also check out what sports have been shown over the next seven days, making sure you don't miss a second of the action. Download the We Love Sport app on the App Store or Google Play Store. Follow We Love Sport on all social media platforms at We Love Sport UK and check out We Love Sport co. Right, so leading into AEW, we've actually got this week's uh, top five ratings. So the men's division, we've got number one is Chris Jericho, number two is MGF, number three is Cody, number four is Jake Hager, number five is Kenny Omega. Women's division, we've got number one is Hikaru Shida, number two is Chris Statlander, number three is Yuka Sakazaki. Number four is Britt Baker and number five is Rio. And in the tag team division, we've got number one is the Dark Order. Very well deserved after last week. Number two is the Young Bucks. Number three is SCU. Number four is the Lucha Bros. And number five is Best Friends. Very nice. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm still just reading over the stuff that's on Disney+. Plus. I'm really excited by it. Um, what, what made me laugh was last night AEW tweeted out before the show, uh, a drinking game because Cody was on commentary. Every time Cody said, wait a minute, you had to drink. You had to drink. If you said it consecutively, you had to drink for five seconds. I don't actually think he said it at all, though, did he? I don't remember him saying, wait a minute, no. It's not a... It might have done, but I, I, to be fair, I didn't know this was a thing, so I completely missed that. Uh, did you not see it on the socials? It, it made me chuckle when I saw it. No, I, honestly, I missed it. I missed it on the socials. So I'm like, oh. I, I, wish, I wish I had that, because I would have looked enough. up for it. <laughs> and we got no Justin Roberts and um, minimal staff as possible they used Brandy Rhodes she was the ring announcer um, a bit of a flashback to her time in WWE because that's what she was she was Eden Styles um, and a very good ring announcer I really I really like her I think I think she is one of the better ring announcers that WWE have had um, it was quite funny hilarious shots throughout the show backstage to multiple w- uh, AEW wrestlers Kip Sabian who had a dog in his arms uh, Penelope Ford, uh, Billy Gunn's son, whose name I really can't remember. Austin. I want to say Bart. Thank you. I was going to say Bart Gunn, but I don't know. Hold on. Right. Austin Gunn. Um, and they were all taking bets on different matches and that sort of stuff. And it was it was, it was was quite humorous. Um, but the thing is with AEW, it got taken up by two. Like The whole show was taken up by two segments, more or less. And then there was other stuff dotted in and out. We got the face-to-face between Matt Hardy and Chris Jericho. Jericho is in the ring. He's about, and he's in the ring waiting for Hardy to come down. Vanguard 1 hovers down to the ring. He sat talking to a drone for two minutes. He just sits and talks to a drone for two minutes. Yeah. Right. Um, and he's, he's asked him to join the Dark Order as well. You forgot to mention that part, but that, a drone joining, uh, not Dark Order. In a circle. Uh, in, in, in a circle. Yeah, yeah so he's, he's asking uh, the drone to join the inner circle. Uh, a drone in the inner circle would be amazing. Uh, would be, it, 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 would, it would be pretty funny. Um, and then we see Matt up in the stands um, and then great editing by the AEW people uh, for him to just slowly dart down like cinema and uh, what's it what's the stop uh, stop motion is that what it's stop called stop motion yeah stop motion yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't like it to be fair I didn't, you did, I didn't, didn't. didn't. Uh, because I like suspending some disbelief when I'm watching uh, wrestling uh, so when the Undertaker does it because the lights go off you're thinking oh he's ran round to the other side of the ring that's fine when they're doing it like that and just going it's like, oh, this is pre-recorded. This this happened yeah. because of that. It, it kind of just takes you out the illusion a little bit. Yeah, it's, something, point. it's something they can't do as well once they have fans back. So it's glad I'm glad that they, you know, if Go they're attempting, it, was, yeah, if it's if it's only a one-time thing, they're only doing it now. It's fine. But if it's becoming a gimmick, as soon as fans get enough, they won't be able to do it. So yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. Um, I've written down a lot of points to do with this stuff, so I'm going to reel through all of them as quick as I possibly can. Uh, Chris is trying to convince Matt to join the inner circle. Matt is more or less just full up refusing. And uh, Matt says to him, you may recognise my face, but he is now Damascus, who is 3,000 years old. He's not Matt Hardy. He's Damascus. Jericho um, Jericho calls Matt's red hair sassy, which I thought was a brilliant line. 
Um, I, like considering the fact Jericho sat there in a sparkly jacket and, and that sort of stuff, and he's calling him sassy. That's that's a compliment and a half. Um, he says he um, he, he's Matt, uh, Jericho, sorry, Chris says that Matt is the same Matt Hardy on the inside. He's known for twenty five years. Matt says the same back to Chris. Um, even though they've both reinvented themselves multiple times over the last twenty five years, and then uh, Matt calls Chris a whole of an ass. As Matt's thing is to to invert words. So instead of young bucks, he says bucks of youth. Instead of asshole, he says whole of ass. Because that's broken Matt Hardy's thing. It's, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that in at work now. Someone I know. What you're a whole of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, but it's great. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, though, I, I love, I love this, I love his, uh, his spiel. You know, the fact that he's an Egyptian guy from three hundred, three thousand years ago, or team yeah, whatever. The, the I, I, and there's like Abraham, no, something. Um, like yeah, he was saying that Abraham Lincoln uh, and Martin uh, Luther King in the crowd. <laughs> I was just thinking, imagine watching that whilst like off your nut. Just that, yeah. in, in saying that, that that would be that would like that would be horrible. <laughs> yeah. That no, it would be mental. Um, Chris says I'm actually living in the shadow. Jeff, um, he doesn't name drop Jeff. He says you're you're a younger brother. Uh, well, poor booking, and now you're living in the shadow of the champion. Uh, Chris again asks him if he's in a circle or elite, and Matt responds by saying delete. He says in a circle or elite. Matt goes delete, and they basically just trade elite and delete between the two of them. And they just, it's like, have you ever seen Ali G where it's like, his third is the best? And they just start swapping it around. It's literally what Matt and Chris were doing was going, elite, delete, elite, delete. It was really weird. Um, Chris points out that there's uh, no fans to join in with the delete chant because they're in an empty arena, of course. And Matt points out the fans, that the fans sing along to Jericho's theme song, Judas. And he says, he knows, he knew the real Judas. Um, and then sings the obsolete song, which is, um, which was interesting. And then Jericho says the ban on the fans was his doing, not coronavirus, which is uh, Jericho's spiel of just being a dick is just absolutely amazing. As Brad said, Matt points out there are fans in the crowd, but there's not. Um, and he says that Martin Luther King is up in the stands and Abraham Lincoln is seat 15C. Um, yeah, it was, it was just, it, right, if, if, you are, if you are going to watch it, don't, don't take Don't it. do it high. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. Like the glue don't was take that. substances. The glue I was having last week to say that the shows were better to <laughs> That wouldn't have been fun for that. <laughs> um, Jericho slaps Matt, who responds and floors Chris. Chris says, you know, you're a wizard because you just managed to knock down a champion in one punch. And um, he says, I'm also a wizard too. Starts becoming sarcastic and goes, up blah, 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 blah. And for Guevara to appear behind him and attack uh, Matt, Kenny and Cody come out with chairs to make the save and they chase off the two hills and stand in the ring with Matt um, standing tall. Really interesting segment. If you're going to have two people do something that's meant to be serious but comes out as comedy, these two are the people because them bickering over the words elite and delete is hilarious. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the two of the best promo in, promos in the business. Uh, it's, it's no surprise at that, really. And they've got 25 years, 50 years experience between the two of them. It is crazy. It is, it is absolutely unreal. Uh, last night, we also got Kenny Omega to, um, in a championship match, but it wasn't a tag title match. It was for the AAA Mega Championship. I can't remember what the Spanish is, uh, but it's Mega Championship in English. Um, I watched the highlights of this on YouTube. Brad kindly pointed out to me before we started recording, this was 40 minutes long. Yeah, it started... Well, I might, I might be lying a bit, but it was at least 35. It started about... It was on the hour, and it went to about sort of quarter of an hour towards the end before the Matt Hardy thing and it was it was way 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 too long put it that way uh, it was a good match don't, don't get me wrong but 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 there needed to be a crowd there uh, and the fact there wasn't it kind of just sucked the magic out of it uh, and Sammy Matt Tonging Brandy Rose was just odd I'll say that much yeah I really don't understand what his obsession with Brandy is yeah, like he had a he had a guy from Star Trek. Uh, they, not not actually Tongue in Brandy Rose. Tongue in a, a, a picture. A, a, of a picture of her that it was in. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was her some a guy from Star Trek, and I think it was Jericho in like little seats, but with A4 picture. It was weird. I, I didn't quite understand what was going on. <laughs> I don't think I ever really understand what's going on when it comes to. Uh... When it comes to yeah. Guevara, he's a, he's a bit of an odd guy. But yeah, it was a really good match. Sounds long. I haven't watched the whole of it. It's probably what I'm going to do tonight is watch the whole of it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it was a good match. Um, 
and Cody was on commentary for this. He uh, he he didn't say wait for it. Um, he was hyping up how uh, the V trigger is the best high knee because that's what a V trigger is. It's a high knee, even though it's more of a mid knee because he does it to like a lower opponent. Mm -hmm. Just saying, just saying. Okay. Um, Jake Hager squashed Chico Adams um, and then was confronted by Moxley after the match and he brawls. Um, I love that um, Cody calls, what do you call the top belt? Big Platinum or something like that. And he says he's bringing, yeah. he's bringing Big Platinum with him. Of course he is, he's a champion. Well, he's always going to bring it with him. Um, Hager, um, sorry, Moxley hits Hager with the paradigm shift and as he stands near him, Hager just picks the ankle, locks in the ankle lock, uh, but Moxley escapes, pushes him out the ring and tries to whip him with a title belt. Mm. And there's a standoff. And obviously, Hager goes to the back. Um, we got uh, an in-ring in debut of Brody Lee as he defeated QT Marshall. Um, but did you see the uh, vignette with Brody Lee? Yeah, when he was taking the mech out of Vince McMahon, he was, uh, because they were eating before he finished, he, he scolded um, Stu Grayson. In the no, it was uh, Alex, Alex Silver. And, and, uh, no, uh, John sorry. Silver and Alex Reynolds. Yeah, well, he scolded John Silver, um, and I think it was Arts Reynolds. He sneezed. Um, <laughs> he got pissed at him. Yeah, it was it was odd. Um, I, I I was I think it was I think it was taking the mick out of Vince McMahon. Uh, it was for, it was fully taking the mick out of Vince McMahon. Brody Lee was in a suit eating a very nice steak dinner. No, like, it looked it looked delicious, but he was just having a go at the pair of them. And then when one of them sneezed, he flipped out because if you didn't know, Vince McMahon thinks sneezing is a sign that you can't control yourself. Well, I mean, it, I mean, it's it's an uncontrollable bodily urge. So I can understand. I, it makes sense, but it's just a crazy thing to get annoyed about. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> interesting. It was interesting at least. Uh, we, last night we were Darby Allen defeating Kip Sabian in what looked like it was about to be a submission, but then he just flipped over and rolled him up. Yeah, actually, to be fair, that that it was an old fashioned like a I think it's an NWA kind of been like Tully Blanchard or someone did it years ago uh, and Cody pointed out on commentary when he did it but that match yeah, well, was a yeah sorry I, I, I'll go and finish I'll say that match was what uh, but I've said that, that that match was really good like um, Derby uh, was quite technical within it but it, again mm -hmm. it, it felt like Luster without a crowd yeah no I agree with you um, I was just going to say that um, kind of pin it was um, it might have been Tony. I can't actually remember who was in commentary last night. Um, I know it was Cody and I think Tony and someone else. I'm not too sure. And um, Kenny and Omega as well. Oh, Omega was there as well. Ah, fair enough. Um, we got a promo from Jay Roberts who was just basically having some words for Cody. Um, he said, you know, bring your... He said, bring your old man and then stopped. And then said, Arn Anderson. I think he said, bring your old man and then realised that obviously Dusty is not, no longer with us. So I had to go, Arn Anderson, quickly. But yeah, he's still yeah. one of the best promos. It definitely. I don't. I don't quite get what Caesar is, but we'll, we'll wait. we we'll wait to see what what he's. He's, he's using. He, he's using Roman. Um, and who turned on Caesar? I, wanna... uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I do I don't know, know this. I do know this, but but yeah, he's he's using. Um, he's basically using different like historical terms to relate to Cody and that sort of thing, and obviously Brandy. Um, but it was it was it was Marcus Brutus or yeah it was Brutus that who uh, assassinated Julius Caesar. So if he said Brutus, seem that was it. It all ties in. Um, and then like I said, Cody did have a match last night. It was on commentary for most of the time. He did have a match. He defeated Jimmy Havoc in a very interesting mishmash of styles. But it's a pretty decent. <laughs> TWM Podcasts have joined forces with WrestleCrate, the original and best monthly theme, monthly wrestling subscription service to bring you a fantastic deal. If you use the code TWM Wrestling when you sign up to a monthly subscription at WrestleCrate.co.uk, you will receive a free item in your first month's box. Then, if you stay for another month, you'll get a second free item. And then, if you stay for a third month, you guessed it, we'll give you a third free item. It's it's as easy as one, two, three. WrestleCrate brings you the best swag from the biggest companies and names in the wrestling world. We're talking t-shirts, photos, pins, DVDs, vinyl figures, and loads more from WWE, Progress, Shikara, NXT, Fight Club Pro, and loads more. 
That's WrestleCrate.co.uk and use the code TWM Wrestling for up to free free items. All thanks to WrestleCrate and TWM. Brad, what was better, AW or NXT? I thought NXT. Uh, AEW is it kind of teased me what was going to happen, and nothing, nothing of what they teased me happened. And I know it's not their fault, but it kind of took me out of it a little bit. NXT sort of um, re- re- was rectifying themselves somewhat because they didn't have a show last week, and they kind of had a show this week. So I'm going to say it's hell of a show. That's a hell of a show. Exactly. And so I'm I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree with you on that one. NXT was was absolutely wonderful. Uh, before we wrap up here, guys, we've got Brad's Corner. Um, Brad, would you like to run us through what's happening next week? Sure. Nothing's been announced for AEW, um, so we'll just leave that as that. But NXT has as, as, uh, sort of the next couple of weeks being announced, and these are definitely going to happen as these, are, these have already been pre-recorded. But NXT North American champion Keith Lee uh, will have a triple threat match for the championship against Dominic Dijakovic and Damian Priest. Dakota Kai, Zayali, Aaliyah, Caden Carter, Shotzi, Blackheart and Diana Perrazzo will face off in a second chance gauntlet match with the winner becoming the final wrestler to qualify for the number one contenders ladder match. Uh, this will be airing on, uh, on April 8th. Um, and Lee was advertised... To, oh, sorry. Velveteen Dream versus Bobby Fish is the third match. And uh, obviously April 8th, you've got the ladder match and uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano. Very nice indeed. But that is us done here on the podcast. Um, subscribe to us on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, tune in, Acast, Podbean, and YouTube. Subscribe, uh, subscribe. Follow us on all socials Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at TWM Wrestle. Head over to TWM.news to read yourself some articles brought to you by I our think, team of this week. I think I'm going to go outside and clap as well because everyone seems to be doing that. Yeah, if anyone is in the UK, <laughs> as it starts, the map will record this. Brad's gone. <laughs> Oh my god, that's a horrible noise. Oh. Hey, I've done it for 10 seconds, right? Carry on. Brad. <laughs> oh, that really hurt my ear. I've just run into my living room. I was leaning out my fucking. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I clearly live in a neighborhood that doesn't care. Anyway, uh, Brad, are you back? Yeah, I think everyone on my street is clapping right now, but yeah. Right, Brad is back. As I said, head over to TWM.news uh, to read yourself some articles brought to you by our wonderful team. Uh, we've got various things. We had TNA, TNA superstars who didn't work in WWE by Sean. Underrated Undertaker matches by Tom. Uh, feuds for uh, Broken Matt Hardy in AEW by Dan. And then we've also got some retro stuff going up because there's not much to talk about in current wrestling in terms of pay-per-views. We have a Chapter 1 retro review by Day. Uh, and then we had... Uh, looking back at the final WCW by Ian. And then tomorrow you've got going out uh, Why Tara is greatest, uh, Impact's Greatest Ever Knockout by Victoria and my article, which is must see Rufus Aggression Era pay-per-views. Saturday, we've also got Brad's one. What have we learned from no fans at WWE shows? Which will be a very interesting read. So we'll make sure to read that. And yeah, yeah, just head over to the website, TWM.news. Subscribe to us on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, in Acast, Podbean, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts from, and follow us on socials at TWM, uh, at TWM Wrestle on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Before we finish here, uh, if you are a worker of the NHS here in the UK and you're listening to us on a podcast in a break, in your downtime or whatever, we thank you. Thank you so much for what you're doing for the country right now because we really don't know what's going on. We really don't know what to do and don't know where to lead, but you guys are leading the line and helping us out uh, wherever you can. And you may have a relative and maybe one of the four and a half thousand nurses and doctors have come out of retirement to help out the UK at the moment. Thank you very much, guys. Brad, what is your social media? Oh, my social media is at BradCasty170. Search my name on the website, Brad Casty, for all my articles. And yeah, just get involved that way. Uh, and my social media is at sexy chucky t because chuck taylor has got through this week he is his twitter game is fantastic follow him at sexy chucky t it's chucky c-h-u-k-i-e but my actual twitter is at george underscore jill underscore guys stay safe look after each other and we love you all and we'll speak to you next week bye